how much responsibility do we have to fulfill our current karmas versus detaching from them and go to an ashram, for example? Uh, we cannot run away from our karmas, what we call the, the prarabdha karma, the karma uh, which is responsible for this life. It's going to take place and we are going to experience it and it, there is no way to run away from it. But there is a way to respond to it in a good way. In other words, the karma of our life is like a movie, but the movie is an interactive movie. So whatever we experience is like a movie, and we created that movie by our past actions. Then it's interactive, we respond to it. The response to this movie is called Agami Karma. So you have the Prarabdha Karma, which is the movie of this life. And then there is what we call, how do you respond to the movie? Our free choices. And uh, there, is a, there is a fundamental question in philosophy. Is there such a thing as free choice? So the answer is, relatively speaking, yes. Um, Relatively speaking, there is free choice. And whenever we speak about karma, everything is relative. So when we speak about karma, our speech is relative. So whatever we say is relative. So relatively speaking, there is free choice. And the free choice is how we respond to our prarabdha karma, the karma which is responsible for this life and which we experience in the form of this life experiences and events, and also our happiness and suffering in this life is also a result of that past karma, okay? But again, how do I respond to my happiness? How do I respond to my suffering? How do I respond to the happiness and suffering of others and so on? So the way of how I respond, it's all kar it, this is also karma, but it's called agami karma, the fresh karma that I create by my fresh actions or free, or free choice. Now that fresh karma is responsible for my future destiny. The destiny of the future is created by my own present free actions, relatively speaking free. It's all relatively spe speaking, okay? It's nothing absolute. So there was a question about responsibility. Uh, on, on a soul level, we have a responsibility, and the responsibility on a soul level is to fulfill the purpose of the soul. And the soul has two purposes. One purpose is to experience creation and also to take care of creation. This is one purpose. The second purpose is to transcend creation and to realize the self. These are the two purposes of every soul. So with the soul, of course, has this responsibility. For example, the soul has the responsibility to take care of creation. It, the soul doesn't take care of creation by itself. The soul takes care of, of creation as a part of creation, right? I'm talking about what we call the individual soul. Each one of us plays a part in taking care of, care of creation. And so we have such a responsibility. We have a role to play. The other responsibility is to realize the self. This is an ultimate responsibility. So those responsibilities um, are the responsibilities of the soul. And, and the soul never tries to escape this responsibility. Even when it seems that it tries to escape, it's a part of the process. So, um, so responsibility in this relative world is almost absolute. Yes, there is a responsibility, definitely. What's the next question? How can, how can you tell the difference between a false sense of duty and your actual duty? Um, there is no false sense of duty. Um, at every moment we have a sense of duty which is due to karmic reasons. And there is a deeper sense of duty which, which goes beyond karma. So moment by moment our sense of duty manifests. 
and it reveals itself. So, for example, we may know or we may discover what is our Swadharma. But in reality, every movement that we do is due to our past karma, and in a sense, we are fulfilling some of our duties. But in order to know what is our Swadharma, there are different methods. For example, Krishna, I had some discussions with Krishna, and Krishna knows Jyotish, Vedic astrology. He told me, that in Vedic astrology, you can actually see what is your Swadharma. You can actually see what is the main vocation for which you were born. And I believe him. Yeah. He's a good uh, astrologer, and uh, Jyotish is a great Vedic science. I really believe him. And um, so this is one way. One way, you go to a good Vedic astrologer, and he will tell you what is your Swadharma. In my opinion, and Krishna, please forgive me, <laughs> there is a better way. It, the better way, in my opinion, is to meditation. See, because a lesser way is for another person to tell you. A better way is to, is to discover it yourself. And for discovering it yourself, you need to meditate. And uh, another way, which is equal to meditation, is if you go if your spiritual preceptor is indicating to you what is your Swadharma. And from my point of view, this is equal to self-discovery. Either you discover it in meditation or your guru tells you this is equal. Uh, and then if you, cannot, if you cannot meditate and if you, the guru doesn't tell you, you can approach Krishna <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, and he can read your Vedic astrology chart, and he can tell you astrologically what is you? Swadharma, yes. So, yeah. What's the next question? Uh, 